Great Lakes Prepping here with a video that I'm pretty excited to be making. I've done a few venison recipe videos over the years, but I've always meant to do way more of them. And this year was a relatively fruitful deer hunting season, at least so far it's still going on. And I've got what I think is one of the most succulent, delicious, delectable venison recipes to share with you today. And I'm talking about venison shank. And if you're not 100% sure what the shank is, basically think of it like the deer forearms and calves. And it's been my experience that most people don't really bother with the shanks too much. There's some meat on there, they'll keep it, they'll throw it in the grind pile or whatever, but it's generally a kind of tough cut of meat. So the kind of default treatment of that is throw it in the grind pile. But as is the case with most cuts of tough meat, be it venison or beef or whatever, if you braise it for a long time in the oven in some liquid, it's going to come out tender and amazing. Also, you've got a lot of sort of tendons and connective tissues and things in a shank. And we're going to really want to break all that down. Kind of low, definitely slow. And after this braises for quite some time, all of that stuff is going to get absolutely tender and broken down and kind of deconstituted into a very tender and dare I say mouthwatering final product. So there's a couple things we have to do to get these shanks a little more ready before we get started. And it's gonna look like there's a lot of ingredients, but honestly, this is a pretty easy recipe. I'm using what I consider to be one of my sort of classic go-to braising concoctions. So we're gonna go through every step and I'm gonna show you how to take this quote undesirable piece of a deer and turn it into perhaps the best venison meal you've ever had. First, let's take a look at all the ingredients we'll use to make these braised venison shanks. First, of course, we have the shanks. Today, I'm making all four shanks from one deer. That's two front shanks and two back shanks. Then we've got some beef stock, olive oil, some dry red wine, in this case, Merlot. Then our vegetables, fresh parsley, carrots, celery, and yellow onions. Then some garlic, fresh thyme, and a couple bay leaves. And finally, some tomato paste and beef bouillon paste. I like the Better Than Bouillon brand, and this could be considered an optional ingredient, but it really does help add to that deep, meaty flavor I'm looking for. To get started, I need to do just a little trimming on these shanks. These shanks came directly from a deer we harvested and butchered in northern Michigan just a few days before making this video. I did a pretty good job while butchering the deer, but there's just a couple little bits of fat left on there that I want to trim off. And there's also a very thin membrane covering most of these shanks. I don't absolutely have to remove it, but I prefer to slice and peel most of that off. This right here is basically the only tedious part of the entire recipe. Now it's time to season. So after patting dry with some paper towel, I'll season quite generously on all sides with kosher salt. This is the only salt I'm adding to the whole dish, aside from whatever salt content is in the beef paste and broth. So I'm gonna go sorta heavy on the seasoning for this step. Then I'll do the same with ground black pepper. Next, I'll prep my vegetables. This step is super simple. For the carrots, I'm just chopping into some big chunks. No peeling necessary. Then I'll do the same with my celery. For the onions, I'll just peel and quarter them. And finally, I'll peel and smash the garlic cloves. These aromatics only serve to make the braising liquid more delicious, and this will all be strained out later, so no need to spend a ton of time dicing or mincing. Now we're moving over to the stove, and I'm going to get some olive oil heated up in my big enameled Dutch oven on medium-high heat. If you don't have one of these Dutch ovens, you can do this step in a large skillet, and then transfer everything over to a roasting pan when it's time for the oven. When the oil is nice and hot, I'm setting in my shanks so they can brown. I want to brown each side of each shank so it gets a nice deep crust on it. And while I really thought my Dutch oven was wide enough for these things, I quickly learned that a couple of the shanks were just a bit too long to fully sit against the bottom. So before I go any further, I decided to fix that situation in the only way that made sense. 
Luckily, my arsenal of kitchen utensils just happens to include a giant bone saw. So I was able to shorten up the excess bone on the couple that were a bit too long. Now they all fit in the Dutch oven so much better, but I'm still only going to do one at a time to make sure each shank has plenty of room to do their thing. After all four have browned up and have a nice crust on all sides, I'm setting them aside and throwing in my carrot, celery, and onion. I'm going to saute these vegetables in the remaining oil and venison drippings for a few minutes until the onions and celery have softened quite a bit. And when there's just a couple minutes left in this step, I'll throw in that smashed garlic. Now it's time to deglaze. So I'll pour in a cup and a half of that red wine. And using my wooden spoon, I'll scrape loose any of those delicious brown bits, also called fond, that stuck to the bottom of the pot during the meat browning step. Now to let that wine reduce, I'll lower my heat to about medium and let that wine simmer away for about 10 minutes. I want to reduce all that liquid by at least half. Once that happens, I'm adding in a couple big spoonfuls of tomato paste, followed by one big spoonful of the beef paste. Stir that all in until well incorporated. Then in goes the beef stock. And then a couple sprigs of fresh thyme and two bay leaves. Now we're finally ready to bring those shanks back into the mix and get this braise started. So I'll set all four shanks into the pot, gently nestling them into the braising mixture. I want them partially submerged in the liquid, but not completely covered. Now the lid goes on and I'm sticking this whole thing into an oven preheated to 300 degrees Fahrenheit for three hours. So while we've still got just a little while left on the braise, now's a perfect time to get our mashed potatoes going. And this isn't a mashed potato recipe video, but while we're at it, I figured I might as well show how I make my perhaps favorite mashed potato recipe, which will make the perfect pedestal atop which these outstanding venison shanks will be presented. It starts off exactly how you'd expect. Peel and cut up some potatoes. This batch calls for between three and six russets, depending on size. The bag of russets I bought contained some rather small spuds, so I'm using five of them. I'll cut them up into relatively similar sized chunks, then drop them right into some room temperature water in a large saucepan. If I was making a larger batch, I'd go with a small stock pot, but this will work just fine for what I'm doing today. Get that pot on the stove over high heat and let these things boil until fork tender, about 15 or 20 minutes. Then I'll strain out the water and start adding my other ingredients. Melted butter, heavy cream, one egg yolk, one great big spoonful of sour cream, a generous pinch of kosher salt, some ground black pepper, and finally some freshly grated Parmesan cheese, about a third of a cup. And while I know all the YouTube cooking channels these days seem to insist on using something called a potato ricer, I find my cheapo electric beaters to work great, just as they always have. And once everything is very thoroughly whipped together, I've got a pot of the creamiest, smoothest, most delicious mashed potatoes ever. And as always, I'll have a link in the video description below to the full recipe for these braised venison shanks, as well as those mashed potatoes and the gravy. Now that three hours is up, let's take a look at those shanks. Just absolutely gorgeous. It almost brings a tear to my eye. This meat is so fall off the bone tender, I barely have to even touch it with a fork to sneak myself a little sample. And I say sample because there's still one more thing we have to make, the gravy. Using that braising liquid, I'm whipping up a quick pan sauce to really knock this whole thing out of the park. So after pulling those shanks out of there, and scooping out most of the vegetables, I'll pour that braising liquid through a mesh strainer. And it's imperative to the integrity of the recipe that you spill a bunch of it all over your counter. To the untrained eye, it may look like I'm just making a big old mess here, but I assure you this is 100% technique, as taught by the finest culinary schools in France. Anyway, I'm going to use two cups of that strained braising liquid. So I'll transfer it to a pan on the stove and bring it up to a simmer over medium heat. Once simmering, I'll start adding in a simple slurry I made from cornstarch and water. I used two tablespoons cornstarch mixed with two tablespoons of water. Stirring constantly and gradually adding a little slurry at a time, this will thicken up that braising liquid into a beautiful gravy. 
I'll keep it on a very low simmer for about five more minutes and the texture and consistency are perfect. And I'll mention that I could add some other seasonings to the gravy, but there's really no need. It's already so flavorful and doesn't even really need any extra salt. And at long last, I can finally start fixing myself a plate of this meal fit for a king. Lay down a nice bed of those mashed potatoes, then find the most symmetrical of those four deer shanks to make for the prettiest video thumbnail. Ladle over some of that beautiful gravy, and garnish with a little finely chopped parsley. And if that doesn't make your mouth immediately start watering, then I honestly don't know what would. All I know is that anyone who says deer hunting and fine dining can't go hand in hand have never tasted this. Here's the deal. A lot of people don't like venison, or rather, I think they've convinced themselves that they simply don't want to eat venison. And in my experience, nine times out of 10, the reason for that is because they've never had it prepared properly or even particularly well. But if I ever had to pick one single dish to try to convert anyone into a venison lover, this would be it. It tastes like beef pot roast, just slightly different. But if I served this to you, and you couldn't tell by appearance that it wasn't beef, I don't think that you'd question me and say, did you just serve me venison? It's got such a great meaty flavor and you get that uh, little bit of red wine coming through and the bit of tomato paste, but it's definitely more of a robust beefy flavor with those sort of roast herbs that you uh, would have come to expect from a roast anything, thyme and bay leaves and whatnot. This is such a tender, flavorful way to cook what a lot of people look at as a throwaway part of the deer, or at least throw it in the grind pile part of a deer. And if you like venison, but your spouse or kids don't want to eat it, so that pretty much means you never eat it, show them this video and just show them this close up of that amazing venison shank with the mashed potatoes and that little pan gravy sauce that we whipped up from the braising liquids. If they take a bite of this and then in all honesty tell you that they still don't like venison, well, then I guess there's just no hope and you're going back to beef. And of course, by the very nature of making these videos, when I do one of these recipes, the food is quite cold by the time I'm done taking thumbnail pictures and doing my little outro. Uh, I pretty much have to eat the rest of that plate at room temperature. And I gotta tell you, with this particular one, I could not possibly care less. It is so good. I'm gonna clean off that bone of all that meat, eat all those mashed potatoes, and I'm gonna have to try really hard not to go back for seconds, and I'm gonna have plenty of leftovers for the next day or two as well. But that's it for now. Be sure to like and subscribe and stay up to date with all our latest stuff, including future cooking and venison videos, of which I really plan for there to be a few more this year. Thanks for watching. Make sure the food you eat is made out of food. And until next time, this is Great Lakes Prepping.